bear in mind, you may want to get a second opinion because not everyone is reading the science here. In fact, even some very well-revered gastroenterologists seem to be very, very underread on probiotic literature. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ruscio. Let's debunk a claim that probiotics are bad for your microbiota and that if you're taking antibiotics, you should avoid probiotics. Every once in a while, I'll come across a news piece that is really discordant with what the evidence shows. And I try to set the record straight because the only person who suffers when a journalist is sort of selectively citing what makes waves and gets clicks is you. Because if you're given a cherry-picked recommendation that's at odds with what the body of scientific evidence shows, then you will likely make a inferior decision regarding your health, and therefore you won't feel as good as you could. So we'll put up a few clips here, but essentially a Washington Post columnist wrote a piece and was also interviewed on CBS making the claim amidst a few different claims, but the central claim was really be careful about probiotics. Probiotics may not be good for you. Probiotics may reduce diversity in the microbiota, in that colony of bacteria and other organisms that live in your gut. When you take a probiotic supplement, you could be disrupting that balance and studies show you could actually reduce your microbial diversity. We know that a diverse microbiota is typically a healthy microbiota. And so this journalist wrote this article, did his interviews, and this is why I'm wearing my, my science over dogma shirt uh, today, because he cites as the main basis one study by this group in Israel, which has published some interesting research, but their finding is really taken out of context. So this Israeli paper did find that when healthy people were given antibiotics and then took probiotics, it took their microbiotas longer to get to normal. And on its face, one might conclude, well, hmm, we should be cautious with the use of probiotics. But again, this is really at odds with what the body of evidence shows. And, and I'll put up on the screen here this really simple sort of breakdown. Fernandez and colleagues performed a very important review of the evidence known as a systematic review. And they summarized seven clinical trials that included a total of 285 individuals, whereas this one study by the Israeli group looked at 21 subjects. And again, the Israeli group did find a delay in the normalization of the microbiota, but they ignore the systematic review of seven studies. And what did they find? They found that probiotics improve diversity. Not only that, but probiotics reduced antibiotic-associated side effects. And third and finally, if an infection was being treated, in this case, H. pylori, the probiotics used simultaneously with the antibiotics led to improved clearance of the H. pylori. So... In this case, really simple. We shouldn't look at one study that was novel, different, interesting, and use the fact that it was different, this sort of novelty bias, and then tell people, well, be cautious because of this one finding, while ignoring the fact that a review of the body of evidence has been performed, clearly showing that if you're using an antibiotic, you should also use a probiotic. Always check this with your doctor, but doctors are humans and they are amenable to bias. So it is possible that your doctor watch this news piece, hasn't been reading the body of evidence on probiotics and will sort of parrot this conclusion. My main gripes with this journalist and his columns or interviews is firstly and foremost, he cherry picked like we went over. He cites one small study, he ignores the body of evidence that finds counter that probiotics are helpful for diversity. Second issue, what I describe as scientific illiteracy, looking at mechanism studies or observational studies over outcome studies. You, or maybe someone that you know, could have complained, my labs were normal, 
but I don't feel good. This is why it's so important why evidence-based healthcare is built upon this pyramid model of outcome data. How does the person's symptoms or disease or syndrome improve? This is the most important. And that's what was ignored here. Findings on a lab, a microbiome diversity assay, or assay, excuse me, were cited over what happens to people? Do people who take probiotics, I'm sorry, antibiotics, do they get diarrhea afterwards? This was ignored. This is what we want to look at. This is most important. So we shouldn't look at mechanism or observation over clinical trials, hence the scientific literacy. Not only that, in this piece, the journalist makes these sort of inferential claims. Well, the one study found that probiotics reduce diversity while simultaneously ignoring the fact that we have randomized control trials that have found things like metabolism, blood sugar, and gut health all improve when using probiotics. I, I can't overstate how important it is that you're on the lookout for this sort of um, really poor inferential thinking. Third and finally, there's a poor understanding of gut health research. What do I mean by that? Well, treatments that increase diversity, namely prebiotic supplementation, are one of the least effective treatments for improving gut health. And we've reviewed the evidence here in the past. So if you want to see our video where we go over the best and least effective supplements for your gut microbiota, I'll include a link to that video. And this was actually surprising to me to see that meta-analyses on prebiotics, which are the food for bacteria and increased diversity, were actually not effective for irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. And then other data finding that prebiotic supplementation may negate the ability of probiotics to remedy leaky gut. So all this to say, the journalist is making the claim that we need diversity, and he's ignoring the fact that probiotics improve diversity, and ironically, diversity feeding treatments are actually the least effective. I would agree with this journalist that healthy people probably don't need probiotics. If you're healthy, you probably don't need a whole lot. Um, but how we define healthy is not always so clear. As an example, we know that people with seasonal allergy may see improvements from probiotics as found in clinical trials. So would someone with seasonal allergies be considered healthy? I would say so. Could their allergy be improved from supplementation with probiotics? Potentially. I would also agree with this journalist that diet is the foundation, but yeah, the, the claim was also made that eat a high fiber diet. This is the best thing to do for your microbiota and for your diversity. And while probably well-intentioned, this is also untrue in the sense that as long as you're getting in a healthy level of fiber intake, meaning you're not eating a very low fiber diet laden with processed foods, then progressively more fiber doesn't seem to lead to progressively better gut health. In fact, for people with gut symptoms, oftentimes they can be flared by higher fiber, higher prebiotic diets, which is why we've discussed on the show in the past that a low FODMAP diet, at least temporarily, can be quite helpful in quelling inflammation and reducing symptoms. So all of this just to say, probably obvious, don't get your healthcare advice from the news. And unfortunately, this is because news tends to reward novelty, as does even medical research. Novel findings oftentimes have a publication bias. We want to be moored to good scientific principles, look at what the best evidence shows, look at what the outcome data shows, and use that to inform our healthcare decisions. Because if you make better decisions, you'll have better outcomes, you'll have less symptoms, you'll have better health. So in this case, if you are using antibiotic, I would highly encourage you to use a probiotic at the same time. 
always check this with your doctor or healthcare provider, but bear in mind, you may want to get a second opinion because not everyone is reading the science here. In fact, even some very well-revered gastroenterologists seem to be very, very underread on probiotic literature. We're all human. We all have biases. Just be on the lookout for the answer your doctor or your healthcare provider gives you when you inquire about probiotics or whatever else. Usually, the more well-read someone is, the more nuanced their answers are. This is the Dunning-Kruger effect. The less you know, the more confident you are. So anyway, just a few things to bear in mind regarding antibiotics, probiotics, and how these impact your gut microbiota. This is Dr. Michael Ruscio, Please like, comment, or share if this video has been helpful.